The Willis Jeep was considered by many on the side of the Allies to be one of the greatest vehicles of the Second World War. Produced in vast numbers and with four-wheel drive, this versatile little machine saw service on every front during that conflict, and it became the inspiration for many modern 4x4 vehicles. Join me in this video as I build and review the 172nd scale plastic model kit of the British Airborne Willis Jeep from Airfix. Hello and welcome to Model Minutes. This kit was selected by you, the community, in a recent poll on my channel, winning with a majority of votes, thanks to everyone who participated. Before I start the kit, please remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Airfix recommends this kit to those aged 8 years and older. The front of the box features an image of the Jeep which looks as though it's about to be loaded to a glider just before D-Day. The box also indicates that it comes with a trailer and a 75mm howitzer. The rear of the box features the colour painting and decal placement instructions for the British version of the Jeep. Upon opening the box you are met with a number of things. The first item I look at is the included paints and accessories, which are present due to this being the gift set version of the kit. Along with a paintbrush and a tube of poly cement, you get four humbral acrylic paints. I did notice that a couple of these had different pots, so perhaps humbral is in the process of changing their products. The paints consist of 26 matte khaki, 33 matte black, 60 matte scarlet, and 86 matte light olive. I will use extra paints as I progress, and will mention them at the time. I won't use the poly cement that is included with the set however, instead choosing to use Tamiya extra thin cement as I feel it has better flow and bonding properties. A tiny sheet of decals is included and feature transfers for two versions of the Jeep. They are well printed and up to the usual standard from Airfix. The instructions consist of an A4 booklet featuring safety warnings, tips for the construction of the kit and some general information about the real Willis Jeep. Step-by-step -step pictures are printed in partial colour and are easy to follow. There are a number of options included in this kit, so careful reading of these instructions will be needed to make sure the right parts are used. A full colour page is also included featuring the alternative paint scheme for a United States Army version which has extra and alternative build options. Two light grey sprues and one clear sprue hold the parts of the models. These are very well moulded with no flash being visible and the details are very well represented. The tooling and design for this kit dates back to 2011, so it is one of the more recent additions to the Airfix range and this quality is evident. I washed all the plastic parts in warm soapy water. This helps to remove any oil or grease left over from the moulding process and give a good clean surface for the paints and cement to stick to. I left the parts to air dry as rubbing with cloths could introduce fibres that could spoil the paint finish. I started by focusing on the Jeep. I cut the parts for the chassis from the sprue using a sharp knife and cleaned up any rough areas with a nail file. The assembly of the chassis is reasonably straightforward, effectively building it up in layers, adding cement and holding the parts in place until they have set. The body of the Jeep is next to be removed and cleaned up. These cement together much like forming a box. The parts throughout this build are quite a bit smaller than what I'm used to, so the use of tweezers might be helpful to help hold and position these parts as you build. The body of the Jeep can then be cemented on top of the chassis, again holding it in position until it has set. You have to be careful at this stage to make sure it sits flat and doesn't end up twisted. The exhaust is a separate part and can be added at this stage. Again it's a small component and requires careful handling and positioning whilst it is cemented in place. Turning the body of the Jeep back over, the three seats can then be added. I used my knife to help nudge them into position and push them down. At this point the body of the Jeep got a coat of Humbrol 86 matte light olive. 
I thinned this paint with some Tamiya acrylic thinner to help improve its flow quality. A few coats will be needed as a result to get a nice even finish. The clear windscreen part was also given a coat of this paint, care having to be taken to avoid getting it on the windscreen. I used a fine paint brush and applied the paint to the moulded windscreen frames freehand. The seats were then picked out in Humbrol 26 matte khaki. I used this straight from the pot as I found it had a nice flow quality already. I also used this paint on the cover for the trailer. You'll be able to notice that I've already painted many of the other parts whilst they are on the sprue with Humbrol 86. The radiator part of the Jeep was then removed, as was the clear part for the lights. I used a general purpose glue to stick the headlight part on, which would help prevent it from looking foggy. This part was then cemented onto the front of the Jeep. It was followed by the bonnet and the windscreen. Care has to be taken as the windscreen is held in place by clips, and as a result can be made to fold forwards. A fuel canister was then cemented onto the rear of the Jeep, ensuring I removed any paint from the cementing surfaces, which will help ensure a good bond. Small details such as the rear view mirror and shovels were then attached to the model. Next, I removed the parts for the airdrop pallet from the sprue. This pallet was used to hold and protect the Jeep whilst it was dropped into action from an aircraft. This is a relatively easy part of the build. Effectively, it has two bases and a bridge in between, which holds them together. Again, paint had to be removed in places to ensure a good bonding surface for the cement. All of the wheels of the model were then painted with number 33 matte black acrylic, taking care to avoid the already painted hubs. The wheels were then cemented onto the Jeep. It is worth noting that the front wheels can be positioned at an angle to make them appear as though they are steering. A good feature for a diorama, I think. I cemented mine in the straightforward position, however. The parts for the trailer were then removed from the sprue, cleaned up and cemented together. This is a simple and straightforward part of the build, essentially being a box on wheels. It is worth noting that the attachment points for the axle are quite small, so care must be taken when positioning this part. I decided to add the extra jerry cans inside the trailer, along with the wooden box. These parts are a nice addition, helping to add more detail and interest. The canvas cover part was removed from the sprue and cleaned up. I won't cement this on top as I'd like it to be removable to view the internal load of the trailer. The wheels and supporting strut are the final additions to complete the build of the trailer. The howitzer was then started. The parts again being removed from the sprue and cleaned up as needed. This is a fairly straightforward construction, presenting no real difficulties. Whilst you watch me finish building the howitzer, I'll tell you a little bit about the real Willis Jeep. Introduced into service in 1941, the Jeep was officially designated as truck half-ton 4x4, and it became one of the most widely used vehicles by the Allies during the Second World War. Derived from the lessons learned during the First World War, it was intended to improve mobility, command, reconnaissance and supply. The Jeep was found to be very capable at pulling a number of trailers, including that of light field artillery. It was so numerous in the Allied infantry that when the Germans saw them in 1944, they mistakenly believed each GI had been issued one. The Jeep was eventually superseded by more updated versions, but not until it had seen action in the Korean War and in an upgraded state in the Vietnam War too. Many of these iconic vehicles are still around today, in museums and in private hands, often making appearances at war reenactments. The versions that can be depicted in this kit are that of a Jeep of the Divisional Headquarters, 4th Army, United States Army in Belgium during 1944. Or the version I chose to build, which is a Jeep of the 6th Airborne Division, British Army, Normandy in June 1944. With the howitzer complete, Humbrol 60 matte scarlet was used to pick out the rear lights and red reflectors on the models, using the tip of a fine paintbrush. Humbrol 135 satin varnish acrylic was then applied in the areas that were to receive the decals. This satin varnish 
will provide a good base for the decals to stick to and prevent them from silvering and spoiling the finish. Humbrol 11 silver was then used to pick out details such as the rear mirror and the heads of the shovels. With the paint dry, the correct decals were cut from the sheet and then soaked in warm water to release them from the backing paper. Humbrol decal fix was applied in the areas that were to receive the decals, which would help with adhesion and soften them into the surface. The correct decals and their location were then identified, and the decals slid off the backing paper and into position. When they had begun to stick to the surface, a further layer of decal fix was applied to soften them further and make them appear painted on. For more information on decal application, take a look for the tutorial I made on this subject on my channel. Humbrol 49 matte enamel paint was then thinned with white spirit and applied to the model. This paint was used to protect the previous acrylic layers and the decals and to give a uniform overall finish. The spare tire was then glued in place. I used a general purpose glue for this as I didn't want to risk ruining the paint finish I'd already achieved which could happen had I used poly cement. Finally, Citadel Known Oil Acrylic Wash was applied in various locations to help highlight the details and also provide an element of weathering. And that's as far as I went with the construction of this kit. This gift set was bought for £5 as a well-known supermarket had them on special offer over the Christmas period 2018. I think this is a fantastic price, especially seeing as at the time of this video, the version without the paints included was retailing for £10. I'll add the link to the kit on the Airfix website underneath the video. There are a large number of extra parts that can be seen on the sprues of this model. Not only the extra parts for the American version, but also some parts that appears to be Vickers machine guns and ammo boxes. This implies to me that there will be a different version of this kit in the future, perhaps an SAS version. Although you end up with a rather diminutive model, I'm thoroughly impressed with the detail and build quality of this kit. I'd certainly consider buying another one to have a go at the American version. The small parts might be a little fiddly for those who haven't had much model building experience, but Airfix does consider this to be a skill level 1, and I think I'd be inclined to agree, as you can get a pretty good looking model for only a few hours work. So all in all, I'm super impressed with this kit and for the price I paid it was an absolute bargain. I'm really pleased with my British Airborne Willis Jeep in 172nd scale from Airfix. As always, let me know what you think of my build, techniques and finish model in the comments below. I'm also keen to hear your suggestions as to other videos and models that you'd like to see me feature on my channel, so feel free to post that too. All that's left to say is thanks for watching this video and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and click that notification button in order to see more content and help support the channel and feel free to share this video with your family and friends. Don't forget that you can also connect with me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. See you all again next time.